Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification where we are talking about the discussions related to the topics of this particular certification and helping you understand them. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are in chapter two talking about preparing for the test automation and uh, looking forward to the next segment of this chapter that is 2.2 evaluation process for selecting the right tools and strategy. Let's get into this and we try to understand what exactly it could be. Uh, when we talk about preparing for the test automation again, uh, there could be many other things which are required to be performed as a part of this particular process. Indeed, it's not that simple that we can just go ahead and roll out a tool to the organization. There could be several considerations which should be taken into account for the purpose of the tool and specific requirements of having a tool. As we learned in the foundation level already that tools may have different activities and purposes within the test process as well. So it's not necessary that an automation tool would be capable of working with different requirements, different platforms, different languages, and different environment. However, we discussed on the environment details earlier as well in the previous tutorial, but here we'll be talking about what exactly it takes to understand the need of having a suitable tool for the organization or for a particular project. To start with, the very first thing we have is to understand some of the basic fundamentals, that is each system under test can be different from one another. And yet there are various factors and characteristics that can be analyzed to have a successful test automation solution. During the investigation of an SUT, the test automation engineer needs to gather a requirement considering its scope and given capabilities. Now different kinds of applications like web service, mobile or web need different kinds of test automation from a technical point of view. In one simple line, all we are trying to say that a tool certainly is meant for a particular reason. You cannot say that if I have bought a functional testing tool, why this tool is not capable of performing the required performance test, security test, usability test, etc. Just like any particular product is for a purpose, like microwave oven is for uh, cook cooking or heating your food, which is already pre-cooked, etc. Washing machine is to wash the clothes. I cannot say just because I have a washing machine can I cook food in that and you cannot say that microwave oven can be used for washing clothes as well. And that's exactly the logic what we can apply here stating that different automation tools comes with different applicability and as we do understand our systems vary in their architecture, in their language, in their platform, the same tool may not be pretty much applicable to them in order to perform the required activities. Thus, we need to step out in the market with list of those characteristics which we have about our application and then look forward to find that particular tool which can serve those purposes. To further understand this, we have the next segment, the requirements for a test automation approach and architecture should consider the following. That is, which test process activity should be automated, which test level should be supported, which test type should be supported, which test rule and skill are should be uh, skill set should be supported, which software products, product lines and family should be supported, and which kind of SUT need to be compatible with the uh, test automation solution and availability of test data and its quality, as well as possible methods and ways to evaluate or emulate the unreachable cases. In simple words, there are so many factors which we can take into account. So for example, when we talk about things like test level, test types and executions or type of test to be executed like functional, non-functional, it all matters to us. It's not that every single tool has all the capability. For example, Selenium can do functional and regression testing, but does not have the capability of doing performance testing. At the same time, we have Loadrunner and JMeter, which has the capability of doing performance testing, but cannot help you with any kind of functional testing. So it is indeed very important. Same way, we may talk about the business lines which the organizations go with. Like, if I procure a tool, how many of other projects can make use of it? So <clears throat> certainly we talk about the test management tools and they are not seen for one particular purpose. We see it more for the organization level that how exactly different business lines can also align with it. Or sometimes we prefer to use a tool which my customer is going to use. If a customer comes back and tells you that, okay guys, you know what we are using? 
the Catalon Studio for automation. So it would be great as you use automation, you look forward to give me the automation script in the Catalon Studio format. So that you don't, we don't want about Selenium, we don't want to talk about UFD, we talk about Catalon now, right? And that's where the need and understanding would come. Same way the technology, the platform of the SUT, as they may be different in nature, would all be considered into account to make this particular decision. So it's not that simple to decide that what exactly needs to be considered. There are multiple factors which we need to answer before we step into the market to look for the tool. Then comes the open source licensing, then what's the cost of that? How much effort I need to be put into that? What is the time required to roll it out? What is the time required for people to adapt it? And many other concepts to be taken into account. So let's continue further. The next part of it is talking about the next segment that is how uh, what illustrates the technical findings of a tool evaluation. So certainly after the SUT is analyzed and the requirements have been collected from all the stakeholders, there are likely test automation tools that meet these requirements that can be considered. There may not be a single tool that fits all the identify requirements and stakeholders should recognize this possibility. It is also helpful to capture the findings about the possible tools and reflect on the various direct and indirect requirements in a comparison table. The goal of the comparison table is to allow stakeholders to see the differences between the tools based on specific requirements. See, indeed, that's one of the way. I may not proceed by just procuring a tool and start with POC by, you know, without any kind of comparisons. In simple word, we are trying to say that, as we just discussed for a long time, that not all the tools may have different uh, purposes, oh, sorry, all the tools may have different purposes and working on different platform and technologies. So you may never find a tool which could fulfill all possible requirements what you have. Requirements related to a level, requirements related to a functionality, requirements related to a language, requirements related to a particular platform, or the matrices, what you want the tool to collect, that the reports, what you see. So it's not necessary that you can find a tool which exactly fits your purpose. So what exactly we do is, as we step into the market and start searching for the tools, we create a table out of it and compare the tool A, B, C, whatever you have shortlisted. And then we try to see which has the maximum requirements fulfilled and what could be okay for us to adjust manually. Because in this case, not 100% automation is going to happen. Some of the activities are going to be conducted manually as well. And are you okay with that cost? Are you okay with having automation for 80% but 20% being manual is still okay for your budget. Or you'd want to achieve something which might uh, you know, give you better results on that. Or what if uh, more than the platform or technical technology which have some restrictions, your monitoring aspect or resulting aspect is equally important. So you might prefer a tool which gives you better reports than that of performing 100% automation. Or what if you have 100% automation but no reporting factors? So I may look forward to balance these comparisons in order to make a decision that what exactly would be the best solution for us because it's very hard to find a tool which can actually fit all your purposes. And that's where the comparison table is required to do this. And once we have this comparison handy with us, it would be easy for us to make a decision that which one is preferable tool among these three or four tools which you just compared. And then we can go ahead with doing POCs also to make sure that our comparisons are practically making sense. And then we can start with a pilot project. Again, we don't roll out blindly a tool as and when we find them. We start with POC, we do the proof of concept, and then we have a good result of POC. We look forward to have a pilot project to see that in the real world. So the final point here is to say the comparison table lists the tool in the columns and the requirements in the rows. The cells contain information about the properties of each tool regarding each requirement and about priorities. For your kind information, if you want to see a quick example of that, you can just uh, hit a keyword on the Google that comparison between Catalon and Selenium, comparison between Catalon, Selenium, and UFT. And trust me, the first few links will give you a very tabulated comparison of each of these. So vertically, you will have the tool names and horizontally you'll have the requirements and you'll find a tick mark or maybe the attributes written that what is the capability of each tool. And that's exactly what we are referring to. So it's a simple assignment for you. You can go back on Google, just talk about comparing any of the three automation tools and then hit enter. Take the first one or two links 
and you would understand what exactly a comparison table looks like. And with that, this particular topic comes to an end. And that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.